lesson, we discuss bond energy and bond length. So we need to know what these words mean and why a certain molecule has a certain bond energy and bond length. To do this, we're going to plot chemical potential energy against distance between nuclei. Let's imagine that we have two hydrogen atoms. And on this end of the graph, we're going to plot what the situation is like when they're very far apart. There's a great distance between their nuclei and then we're going to see what happens to their chemical potential energy as they move close together and as they are very close together. Bond length means the distance between two bonding nuclei. So here we have two hydrogen atoms and when they bond, when they are stable, then the distance between their two nuclei is called the hydrogen molecule's bond length. Now in the case of the hydrogen molecule, H2, there's only one bond inside the molecule and so there's only one bond length. Here's a water molecule representation. It's a slightly more complex molecule. There are three atoms involved in a water molecule. In other words, there are two bonds involved and the distance between each bonding atom is called the bond length. In the case of water, each of the bonds is between a hydrogen and an oxygen atom, and so the bond lengths are equal to one another. Now, if you want to break a bond, you'll have to put in energy, and the amount of energy that you'll need to break one of those bonds is called bond energy. Since we're going to plot chemical potential energy against the distance between the nuclei, we need to understand what chemical potential energy is. Any kind of energy is the ability to do work, and work is always done when a force acts through a distance. There are different kinds of force, and one of them is electrostatic force. Electrostatic force might be attraction or repulsion. Attraction occurs between opposite charges, positive and negative attract and repulsion occurs between like charges. Positive and positive repel, negative and negative repel. If there is a net attraction or repulsion between two objects, then they will exert electrostatic forces on one another, and so they can do work on one another if they are free to move through a distance. The more work they can do on one another, the more the chemical potential energy there is. The less work they can do on one another, the less chemical potential energy there is, and so the stabler the setup, the less the setup can change. Here we have our graph of how chemical potential energy changes as the distance between two atomic nuclei change. So we can see when the two nuclei are far apart, they have a certain amount of chemical potential energy. For simplicity, let's just say energy. Now the fact that we've called that amount zero doesn't mean they have no energy when they are far apart. It's just we need some kind of reference and scientists have, for whatever reason, decided to choose the reference, the zero point, as the amount of energy that the two atoms have when they're infinitely far apart. So let's say here we have two hydrogen atoms very, very far apart from one another, and we say that the amount of energy that they have is zero. Remember, that zero doesn't mean nothing. It's just our reference point. As they move closer to one another, their amount of chemical potential energy decreases. They become more and more stable until we reach this point where they are the most stable. That's where they'll settle because that's where they're most stable. And at that point, the two nuclei of the hydrogen atoms are a bond length apart. Now, if they get closer to one another than that, their amount of chemical potential energy increases. They become less stable. Let's say all this in another way. When the two hydrogen nuclei are far apart, although it says here they have zero energy, remember that doesn't mean that they have nothing, they have actually quite a lot of energy there. So they can do work on one another, accelerating one another together. As they move together, their chemical potential energy changes to kinetic energy, they get faster and faster moving together, but they get less and less chemical potential energy until they reach the point when all their chemical potential energy has been converted into other forms of energy and they have the least amount of chemical potential energy they can have 
And at that point, they're the most stable because now they can't do more work on one another, accelerating one another either together or apart. And that's where they bond. But if you would force them even closer together, then you would have to put in some energy to do that. They wouldn't want to go close together just by themselves. And that energy that you'd put in would be converted into chemical potential energy, enabling them to do work on one another again, forcing one another apart back to the bond length. And the difference between the amount of chemical potential energy that these two hydrogen atoms would have when they are infinitely far apart and when they are at their bonding length, that difference is equal to the bond energy. That's the amount of energy you'd have to put in to break that bond and make those hydrogen atoms go far apart from one another again, against their will, we could say. Now, why is this graph as it is? Let's discuss this in terms of attraction and repulsion between two hydrogen atoms. So here we have them very far apart. The opposite charges between them attract one another. The electrons from one attract the protons of the other. But the like charges repel one another. The electrons from one repel the electrons of the other. The protons of one repel the protons of the other. But now when they are far apart, these two hydrogen atoms attract one another stronger than what they repel one another. So there's a net attraction force between them and that can do work on them, accelerating them together. And so they move together as they do so. Their chemical potential energy is converted to kinetic energy and they get less and less chemical potential energy as they get closer and closer. Now, if you force two hydrogen atoms together, even closer together than their bond length, or if maybe as they're moving together, their momentum carries them beyond their bond length, then we get this situation. And now the repulsion forces are stronger than the attraction forces. So there's a net repulsion. And so now they can do work on one another, pushing one another apart. Again, converting chemical potential energy into kinetic energy. And they will settle at their bond length, where the forces of attraction and repulsion are equal to one another, and so they're stable. And they're not going to be able to do work on one another, either to force the two nuclei apart or to force the two nuclei together. So here we have the graph again. When the two nuclei are far apart from one another, there's a net attraction force that accelerates them together. At their bond length, they're stable. There's no net force. Closer than the bond length, there's a net repulsion. They accelerate one another apart. And before we go, have you already liked? Have you subscribed? Have you left me a comment? And please go and visit my website. You'll find a lot of resources there and they're categorized in a way that will make it very easy for you to find what you need. Until we meet again, learn science.